Hi, my name is Daryl Peterson and I'm one of the technical sales managers here at MicroMeasurements. Today I want to spend a few minutes and discuss with you how to evaluate and install a strain gauge. And there's really three key criteria that we're looking for. Uh, it's optical checks, electrical checks, and performance checks, and we'll take a look at each one. But first off, you start with the optical checks. A lot of times when you're, you're installing strain gauges, you may be putting them inside of an oven and they may be under pressure. And when you take it out, the first thing we want to do is take those clamps off and optically inspect the gauge. And what we're looking for is to see that the gauge is oriented and adjusted in the correct position. And also that there's no signs of an edge or corner of that gauge that's been lifted. If you see any of that, if you see maybe the gauge has slid or it's moved under the pressure, or you see a corner of it that's lifted, the best thing you can do is scrape it off and start again. One of the other things we're looking for, in particular with solvent thin adhesives, is that we're looking to see that there's no voids underneath the gauge. If you see any voids or light areas, the best thing you can do is to scrape that gauge off and start again. Assuming that it passes all the optical checks, the next thing we do is we attach our wires to it and then we check it electrically. We manufacture a box, it's called a gauge installation tester, GIT 1300, and it really serves two purposes. Number one is that it checks the installed resistance of the strain gauge and compares it to a resistor that's inside of this box. And what we're looking for is to see that the gauge meets the tolerance provided on the engineering data. Oftentimes, this is in a range of about 0.3 to 0.4%. And on flat surfaces, you should be able to, to install the gauge and keep it within that tolerance. Now, you may find applications where you put it on a small diameter rod or you put it on a fillet that will cause that tolerance to broaden. And it's really up to you to decide what's an allowable level of resistance change from the nominal. Second part that this box, or the second thing that this box will check for is is the resistance to ground. And what we're looking for is that you can get the gauge installed and if you were to look at the electrical integrity between the strain gauge and that part, that resistance should be at least 10,000 million ohms of resistance. If it's something less than that, then most likely you've got a conductive path. It could be flux that's left over, could be a wire that you strip back too far. If it's flux, you need to go back and reclean it. If it's a wire that's stripped back too far, you need to remove it and replace it. Now, once it passes the electrical checks, <clears throat> the last set of testing is really performance. And we're looking for three key factors. We're looking for zero return, repeatability, and how it behaves under a constant load. So once you, once you pass the electrical checks, you connect it into your electronics, you try loading the structure and then release the load and see if the strain gauges come back to zero. The zero return is probably the best indicator of a strain gauge that's responding correctly. Number two is you look for repeatability. So you apply the load, maybe do it three times and see that the gauge repeats to the same level all three times. And then the third part of the performance check is the creep. How does it behave under a constant load? And in general, well-bonded strain gauges should change less than about a half a percent of its value when you put it under constant load. So for example, if you loaded it to 1,000 microstrain, it should change by less than five counts. And if you go through this process, if you check it optically, you look at it electrically, and you check its performance, and it passes all three, chances are you've got a well-bonded strain gauge. For more information, you can check our website at www dot micro measurements dot com. Thank you.